Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I have an extremely good surprise for y'all. I'm about to start some live training with my inner circle students. My program where I teach people how to do uh, better marketing fundamentals, level up their ad creation, improve their ads to improve their performance and scale their business to new levels. And today we are going over the exact process I follow to build an ad from scratch. I'll be calling out on a random student using that particular student's business that I have no clue what it is or anything like that. You'll see how we pick a student on the call. And uh, yeah, so it's gonna be a really, really fun video for you guys today. So with that, without further ado, let's dive into it. Shrimmer is a student call from my Inner Circle program, which is if you click the link below, have Nick Terrio mentor you, you can join the next one. So with that being said, let's dive into the video. All right, awesome. Um, great seeing everyone. It's like we had a nice little house for today. Uh, today we'll be going over something that honestly, I probably should have done sooner in my life um, or sooner in the life of the inner circle. Um, and that's live building an ad with you guys. So today we're going to be picking someone in this call and we're going to do firsthand exposure of me doing the research, ideation, and we'll kind of do it as a collaborative team effort as well, just so you guys can kind of see exactly how I go about things when I'm building an ad right here. Um, so couple rules. Um, rule number one, just for the simplicity of this particular call, I only want e-commerce products. Um, obviously, this whole exact process can be applied to service-based businesses and Legion and everything like that. But just for simplicity of today, let's just keep it to e-com because I'd say 90% of the call is e-com. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write a number on my little pen and paper right here. And uh, what I'll do is, is everyone who wants to potentially participate in this, I'll get you guys in a second, not yet, in a second to drop a comment below with a number. And the one with the closest number will use your product for today's call. So I'm going to go ahead and write a number down right now. All right. So what I'll do here is between one and 1,000, Drop a comment below if you want to participate. And the person closest to the number I just wrote down between one and 1,000 will use your product for today's uh, call, for today's lesson. And go now. 10 seconds. All right. Everyone got their number in? All right, cool. Number here, 300, if you can see that. So whoever got closest to 300 will be using your product for today. Ooh. <laughs> All right, let's see. Jose got 306. Jose got 306. Isaac got 320. Yeah, so it looks like Jose, you'll be the closest for today. Jerry, you're just missing two zeros. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, Jose. Good. Okay. Let's use your product for today. Can you drop a comment below with the link to your product? To my website? Wherever you send traffic to, to for people to convert. Yeah, yeah, to the website. It's it's on Shopify. Okay, here. I'm going to share my screen and we'll, we'll start going through this. <clears throat> All right. Rack. Ah, it is a clothing brand. Okay. So yeah, good thing it says a few clothing brands on this call. All right. All I need to know is what's your best selling product? So this? currently we're selling the most, yeah, this top over here, that one, and also our leggings. If you scroll down. Okay. Or do you, or do you just need one? I just need one. I like to look at best selling. So okay. you got leggings and you got your top right here. Yeah. All right. So first things first, when I take on a new client, so I'm going to take you all through the process of how I'm going to take on a new client. So let's just assume Jose came on as a client. Uh, first thing I'm looking at just from general is just what's best selling. Uh, when there's a store of tons of products and stuff like that, I don't really have the time to go test all of these products. So the very first thing I'm going to do is just go look at what's best selling. What has the, the most number of orders on a monthly basis? And I'm going to start off with that. So here, it's pretty clear that the best selling is uh, this particular top. Right, Jose? Yeah. Okay, cool. So let me click on this. Are they pretty much all the same right here out of these three? Or is it just different colors? Like, what's the difference between these three? I use color swatch, color swatch. So each variant is displayed differently, but it's the same product. I gotcha. Okay. 
also too let's just give a quick little um just a, like appreciation here look how good your website looks it's a very good looking website man um you. you're you're doing something i tell i tell literally everyone is you probably only have what like three four five products on your website but to make it look like you have more products you do a separate listing for each color I love this a lot because it makes it so much easier for me to see the different colors of products. And like, maybe these leggings don't pop to me, but when I see this color, it really pops to me and I'm more likely to click on it right there. So mm -hmm. just a quick little appreciation on that. That looks very good. Um, all your product photography looks really good as well. Um, yeah, this is good, man. I like this. So Thank you. cool. So let's look at the product itself. We got us a gym sports bra. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Actually, we promote the brand as um something that you can use for workout or for everyday basis. Okay, cool, cool. All right, let me just translate this to English here. Okay, cool. Yeah, this looks good. Um, very good website. Very good product photography. Um. You know, this is this is a really good thing right here to talk about like for your product is that you're dominantly showing off the visuals. No one really cares too much about a long text for clothing. Clothing is all visuals. Um, maybe mm -hmm. if you had something like unique, no one's ever saw before. And it's like, what the hell is this? Like, what do I do with it? Um, you're in a very sophisticated marketplace right here. Uh, before I do any type of research, just looking at just kind of my... Um, I don't know, just general knowledge on the marketplace. You're in a very sophisticated marketplace. Um, gym clothing is nothing new. You're not introducing any type of new mechanisms here. Um, you know, there's already lots of sports bras on the market. So you're going to be somewhere between that stage four and five um, market sophistication. Uh, from just a market awareness perspective, you're in a solution aware market because, uh, you know, girls are already actively aware of sports bras and stuff like that. Um, so mm -hmm. I would say solution aware, market awareness. And then from there, I'd be looking at, um, you know, market sophistication of like a four or five. Now, um, from there, it's, it's more so which one do we actively decide to participate in? That's the key thing right there. Right? That's why I say four or five. Um, I know you're yeah. four for sure. Uh, five, I just don't know if we want to actively participate in a five yet, if that makes sense. What, what what was the five? So five is identity. So I'll give you a great example really quick of one for identity is violate the dress code. Um, this is an old uh, <laughs> bus, so we don't have <laughs> grads, but we consulted with them. Um, and violate the dress code, they separated themselves differently by going after girls who are like more bodybuilding have a little bit more like muscle and stuff like that they really want to try to go out for like those types of girls versus like if we look at the type of girls you actively showcase i would say they're a little bit more like workout just for like health if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah so so that's that identity stage um cool so great product this will be fun so this is the flow chart i synthesized to you guys uh the other day um, this is literally our flow of how we make every single ad. So I'm going to go with this through with you guys today. Um, obviously, step one is research. So when I start my research, the first thing I'm doing here is I'm busting out a piece of paper and you can call this whatever you want. Um, I'll just call this research. And there's no like really like structure to this in terms of like I don't really lay it out super structured I just open it up like this and that way when I go through this research I can just write down shit that catches my attention I can write down ideas that pop my head hooks that pop, that pop up I like hooks that pop up my head of kind of how I would write that um kind of visuals I keep seeing over and over and over um just like different things that pop in my head as ideas I'm going to write that down as research and also different things I see that's catching my attention and like different observations I'm making across the market. So first thing I love to do, and it just makes life easy for research, is going to foreplay and inside of foreplay, um, just honestly, just going straight and literally going to the discovery tool right here and just doing like sports bra. We'll start off with something like that. 
and just actively search that product itself and just kind of see like what's working across for like other brands. So um, I literally do this even for just like out account audits when clients are potentially looking to come on board. Um, we'll go ahead and do this just to kind of quickly see like what's working. What can we recreate that's already working before we get kind of like crazy into our own ideation side? So uh, two things I just applied real quick is language. I made sure that's English because sometimes like if you go to foreplay and you start looking at all the different ads, um, it just they'll show like different languages and stuff like that. And look, to be fair, I only speak English. And then active uh, or status, I made sure that was still running. So that way we can actively see what's kind of been running in across the marketplace. Now, I'm not really concerned too much here about like how long it's been running or anything like that. I'm more concerned about just what's grabbing my attention, right? What's some of the unique things I'm seeing? So, um, you know, this was saved three weeks ago. It doesn't mean it was only been running for three weeks. Actually, it's been running about 49 days from now. Um, so it's like, let's see, I used to wear two sports bras to hold. Let's see. Okay. So just kind of a very simple sports bra blown up on TikTok. Size range, every boob body da, da, da. okay cool so kind of going through just a common problem that other um people would have experienced wearing like other types of sports bras and this one's just kind of showcasing how it's a better one aka stage four mark sophistication um i like it it's more more educational and more like kind of hitting on problems and benefits it's not really focusing on kind of like identity or anything like that um but yeah so i'm gonna save this one I'm also going to call this what I typically do. If it's a client, I'll type in client. If it's an audit I'm doing for a potential client, I'll just type in audit. And then what I'll do is I'll start creating a dashboard. Let's see. Yours is called boom. And I'm going to save that under audits. And I'll send this to you as well, uh, Jose. Thank you. Cool, cool. So yeah, so I'll just start going through. I'll start saving stuff. Um, I'm just trying to get different ideas of what's working, what's going on. Uh, what's the type of like visuals and stuff like that that other people are using? So like, here's like a girl working out in the gym. Um, you know, this is like some high quality photography right here. Let's see. We definitely need some of those. Definitely need some of those. Um, this looks like it's just hitting on the pricing point. Obviously, that's a different pricing. So that's why it looks so high. Uh Let's see. Some of these really don't kind of hit on anything. Do, do, do. Oh, this is a really good one right here. This one's hitting on uh, just like the problem of other sports bras just being like uncomfortable. So even it's just something simple headline right here that's just hitting on that. Also, the close up of the photography right here kind of makes it look a little bit better um, for like the comfort side. Um, let's see. In your experience with with icon, the um, the it, pictures still work or just videos, mostly videos. Yeah, both. They both work. So, and you'll you'll see in a second how we kind of look at that. Um, obviously, like for me, it's more so you know like this one right here is calling out a benefit, right? Whereas like this video right here is just showing the girl wearing it and using it, the product. So they mm -hmm. both have their places and they both appeal to a certain level of people. Um, but would I be all in on one? No, I'd be trying to make sure. All right, this one. All right, this is a great example of like a sports bra, introducing a new mechanism for a sports bra with this like type of zip up right here. Uh, that's pretty cool, showing how the product is being used. Uh, let's see, it's not letting me see. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, do, do, do. so I'd go around a little bit through this. Um, it's also starting to give me, like I said, it's giving me the idea of like, <laughs> what type of people that's working. Um, it's also giving me the idea of, uh, like what type of people, what type of visuals are working as well across the market. Um, what are some different creative types that we can introduce into the account? Um, so, you know, I'd be, I'd be writing all this down as I go through, um, so like girls, 20, it looks like it looked like about 25 year old. Let's see, female, 25 year old, gym content within weights, hitting on how soft it is. 
Boom. So I'm just writing down different things like that as I go through this board. Um, and what I'll, what that'll do is allow me to start to put together those kind of first visuals around these ads that we're looking at. Um, Nick, how do you, ahead. how do you, uh, match your brand identity with, uh, with what is selling the most, for example, we almost never promote our clothes within the gym, but mm -hmm. what if, what if it, it is selling uh what if gym videos are selling more better than lifestyle videos mm. so right now okay. i'm not worried about that right now in my particular research phase i'm not worried about any of that right now right now i'm just trying to understand the market that's all i'm trying to okay. do okay right now all i know is i'm selling a sports bra and i'm just trying to understand the market that's mm -hmm. all i'm trying to do right now those are great questions you have but that comes down later into the process of which we're mm -hmm. going after uh -huh. so um cool oh this is an interesting one right here i wonder if this is a quiz or not let me see no it's not a quiz okay sometimes quizzes work really well cool let me see this one let's see definitely seeing a lot of kind of like videos and kind of pain points uh the fit for larger breasted women so that's also another like potential. Again, I don't know if our product does that yet. I'm not even worried about that right now. I'm just simply observing the marketplace. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to have that, that high level view of just what's going on in the marketplace. And that way I can figure out what's the best way we can position our products in there. So cool. So that'll start giving me some ideas for, um, for content. Let me click on this. Also, I'll share this, which which also we all can have this. Not really sure who's gonna benefit from it, but there we go. Cool. So I'll start going through with that. Next thing is, um, so I obviously competitors, there's a little bit more to the competitors as well. What I could do is I could go and look at, uh, so like for example, you're in, I would almost say like Lululemon would be, Lululemon would be like a competitor for you. Um, let's see if they have a sports bra. All right. Awesome. So I'll go like Lululemon, for example, I'll go pick one of like their sports bras. And then what I'll start looking at is their reviews right here. Um, reviews work really well. I like to look at the kind of like the main ones in terms of like the, like the positive ones, but I also like to look at the negative ones as well. Uh, the negative ones, you can find a lot of really good stuff in terms of like what people hate about this particular product. And then we can look at for our product, does our product not have those problems? Does our product do that better? So that way we can kind of have like a unique selling point. Of course, it wants to load right here. All right, I'm not gonna wait for this. You get the point though. Look at the reviews. Um, in, in those reviews, look at positive, look at negative, look at, you know, why people hate that product, why people love the product. If you can kind of pick any character character identities as well, like, hey, I love work, wearing this Lululemon bra when I go to my yoga session, for example. So you can start looking at and placing what's those like key areas of, um, you know, where this particular uh, person would wear this sports bra. So next thing is where we look at our brand for research. A um, couple of places I like to go for research for our brand, obviously our own reviews as well, figure out what people are saying. And then second thing is I would also like to look at like ad comments. Um, I know for like one of our accounts, uh, uh, simple painting, we scale them from 1K a day to 10K a day in ad spend, even capping at 30K a day in ad spend in December. Um, and literally all came from just one comment we found on an ad. Um, and we created a hook around that, some new visuals around that hook, and then boom, it exploded. So I would also like look at ad comments, see what people are saying. Um, again, a lot of them will be trash, but we're just kind of looking for those key things that pop our attention. Uh, I know if like simple painting, for example, we saw a girl tag another girl and said girls night soon, question mark, and that was it. And we just took that girls night soon. We created a hook. Here's for my girls who want a girls night soon and then try this new amazing product. And it rushed for us. 
Um, obviously, like I said, next one will be your website. Let's just look at these reviews real quick. Um, wonderful, at the top all green and white, love them. They're just like in the photo. Oh, okay. When doing high impact sports, the bandages do not have as much support because they are very elastic and do not tighten as much. Uh, interesting. Okay. So I know you just said something about like yoga or like not in the gym, but we'll say this person is doing high, bit, high impact sports. <laughs> so write all this down. Uh, you can even just kind of copy, copy it over. Let's do, 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 boom. Love this top. Best pleasure was buying it. Fabric exquisite. It holds me super well and I feel very comfortable. You can talk about the hold in that sense. People, girls looking for better hold and comfort. Uh, very pretty vintage. He doesn't have support I need for the sport I do. Ooh, okay. So there's a mixture of, of seems like what, twice now people talk about different types of sports. Yeah, th this one, this bra is is not for high Im impact sports. This one is more soft. Ah, okay. So that can be <laughs> that can be something right there. You even call out on the page. Yeah, that could that honestly, you could turn that into a pro and con. So you can call out like, hey, this is not recommended for high impact sports, but here is the product that we do recommend, and you can link them to another product on your website. So that way it's a win-win. Instead of them complaining and having a refund or try to send the product back, you can address that now on the page itself. That's a good one, yeah. Yeah, you can even put some type of little like sliding composition thing right here that showcases like, I've seen this before on like different types of products. Um, even for me, like cigars, for example, like mild to like heavy and then it shows a little slider. You can showcase something like, um, you know, support you know, light, you know, very supportive. And then you can have a little slider of what type of bra that's for. <laughs> I can use in the ca category, like on top, in the top bar, I have tops and I can um, make it specific for support. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Cool. So great. So we saw some competitors, we saw our brand. Now, last thing is I'm looking at content. Now, content, a couple places I like to go to. Um, I like to go to Quora. Uh, Quora, I find, has been better than Reddit lately. Um, Reddit's still very good, but Quora's a really good one, too. Um, TikTok is probably one of my favorites, just for how, like, wicked easy it is to do it. So if I just search up, like, sports bra, for example, um, one, one other reason why I like TikTok is for how quick it is for me to consume a lot of content for a particular niche. Where like if I go to YouTube, it's a lot of like 10, 20 minute videos. Now, again, they both have their pros and cons. The 10 to 20 minute videos on YouTube are gonna be a lot more in depth and I'm gonna learn a lot more. Whereas like TikTok, it's a lot shorter. So I'm not really gonna learn much about the niche, but I'm gonna see kind of, you know, what type of uh, more where like what's getting attention, what type of hooks are working as well. Um, I can also learn a little bit more about the niche itself. Um, so that's a great one right there. Um, look, there's no easy way around this. I'll just search up the product, uh, depending on the level of market awareness. Obviously for us, like we, we kind of knew it was a solution aware market, but let me give you guys a great example. I'm, I was researching a product before this call uh, for NAD Plus. Not sure if you guys heard of NAD Plus before. I searched it up and little to no results came up about it. So then I had to kind of start figuring out what is the benefits of taking Mad Plus. And like one of them was like joint support, inflammation and stuff like that. So then instead of me searching up Mad Plus, I searched up inflammation and I started to see what all the people are searching about inflammation and which is more of a problem aware market awareness. And then I could start to see what hooks are working for inflammation. So I could pull those hooks and then use them to pull into people like for my Mad Plus product right there. So just going to give you another example of like research. Um, but this one, like I said, we got lucky today. We got a pretty straightforward product. Um, I'll start looking through this. And again, I'm just kind of interested in the types of hooks that's working well. POV, girls putting on new sports bra. We've already seen the um, POV work well for a couple other things. Um, you could try a couple different routes right here. Uh, you know, just because we see the views, the likes, the comments on this. I would even potentially take this and just like write down the idea of like POV, you found the perfect supportive 
sports bra. Now, again, that actually might go against our product because we just recently learned that it's not really that supportive. So, you know, but again, just ideation phase, you're writing whatever comes to your mind and you can always critique later. You're not really focused on what you're writing down. You're just writing down fucking ideas. That's all you're doing. Um, so I'll go through this. I like to look at the comments as well. I find a lot more um, gems in the comments typically than the actual, like, I would say, you know, consonant itself, uh, but they're both very useful. Also too, if you have foreplay, you can see right here, I can save this to foreplay. Um, I can actually save it to the particular board we created. Let's see. I don't know why it's running slow today. Oop. Hold up. Give me one second real quick. Yeah. You can save it to the board as well. Um, let me, uh, I'll fix that later. But yeah, so I'll just go through. Uh, oh, wait, hold up. One thing I just saw really quick. So obviously something big here we just noticed is girls talking about the padding being removed almost immediately. Um, girls even talking about how they hate the padding. Again, all I'm doing is making observations of the marketplace. I'm not really focusing on our product yet. Girls <laughs> hate the padding. And I'm trying to go into this as like, I'm just discovered this marketplace. I just took on this product and I need to really understand it. So I'll write down key things like this. Let's see. Uh, uh, yes, Taylor Swift must have Amazon sports bra. So this is going about like the price point right here. Do size cool. You can also start to understand again, types of girls kind of fits our age group that we even talked about right there. Um, you can also talk about the filming location inside. I would say nice. I don't want to say upper income, but you know, um, appealing room. It's a good one on the actual like sports itself. Oh, this is actually a really good comment right here. Now this might not, this like literally might not even apply to our product as well. Um, but definitely something that we could look at potentially depending on the type of sports bra we're working on. I know that's not our route for this. But definitely something you could look at right there. Another, I think this has probably been the most common thing I've seen now since we started looking at foreplay and since we started looking at even like right here is girls needing a particular sports bra who have um, larger breasts. So here's another one right here. Write that down. Jose, is, is that anything that our product can help out with? Mm, not that I know. Okay. I mean, we have another bra that also sells good, not top selling, but it's good, that has a lot of support. Not as much as this one right here, but people comment that it's the best for high impact. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, here's another good one right here. Can you run in it? The same. Like this one is not the best for running, but the other one is. Gotcha. Okay. This one actually is more for, let's say, yoga, Pilates, or like everyday like lifestyle. Everyday lifestyle. Okay. Or just going to the gym and lift weights, you know, with no jump. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of content in this particular niche around just support support and then now look support and good colors all right cool i'm not going to sit there go through all these because i could literally be here for hours but everyone everyone tracking so far can i go through this process yeah, I have a quick question though. Go for it. So, so how, when we're figuring out our competitors, like for me, am I just looking for t-shirts in general or am I looking for funny t-shirts? Like how niche should I be in my search? Yeah, so you kind of have to look at your niche. Um, yeah, you're, you're funny t-shirts in a way. So you're pretty much competing with any graphic t-shirts is what you're looking at. Um, that's your biggest competitors right there. Anyone else that's selling graphic t-shirts at scale, that's your competitor. 
Got it. Thanks. And then you can look at the type of graphic t-shirts. Like for example, you're not competing with animate graphic t-shirts unless you had a large portion of your market that love anime. Um, so you kind of have to also look at like, what are the favorite interests of your particular marketplace? And then the graphic t-shirts they're buying, that's also what they're competing for because you're competing for the money in their bank account. Got it. Thank you. Well, yeah. And also I have a question, uh, because we are selling shots. Um, mm -hmm. so we don't have any, like, you know, competitors that are, uh, you know, like big enough when it comes to our mechanism. Um, so like, you know, the company that is doing the same. And what's the benefit uh, of your product? Uh, we have four products and each one is solving uh, different problems. So uh, first is uh, Euphoria Shot, which is giving you, uh, mm, you know, Euphoria. Uh, second second shot is uh, Relax. Uh, so you can okay. unwind. It's like so, Xanax. So uh, you're competing. Your competition is everyone who's saying their product has the benefit of relaxation. Okay. Okay. So, Every, so, yeah, everything, yeah. everything that gives someone relaxation, that's what you're competing with. Okay. But when it comes to like, you know, make, making uh, market research, uh, should mm -hmm. we like try, uh, should we find, uh, different supplements, uh, or, okay. That's literally what I would start with. Okay. Okay. And then I would start to even, so like, I didn't really get that great of a search on that one, but I would say like how to relax. Okay. That's making a sense. You know, I'll start looking at the other products, um, relaxation supplements. Cool. <laughs> a couple of them just popped up. A lot of them popped up. <laughs> so that's, that's what you have to look at. You have to look at, Hey, we have. For example, you know, euphoric uh, relaxation. I know another one of your products gives energy, for example. So what you would do in that place is you're competing with everyone that gives, okay. I would say, that particular benefit. You're not competing with other people that sell shots. You're competing with other people that sell people on that desire of relaxation. Been our okay, okay. That's who you're competing with. And you have to prove why your product is the best product for relaxation. Here's all the things you've currently been sold on or all the things that you've heard about relaxation. This is why our product is the best for that. Okay, I understand. That makes sense. Yeah, so that's what you have to get into. Okay, thank you, man. You're welcome. All right, cool. So... I'll go through the research phase. Um, typically for research phase, I'll spend at least four to six hours on the research phase. So what I just did in the what last 10, 15 minutes, it feels like 10, 15 minutes, actually like 20 minutes. Um, I would spend probably four to eight hours before I write anything on this. Um, and also too, let's keep in mind here. I do this every single time I write an ad concept. So the first research session is always going to be the longest, but if I'm like 50 concepts in, I may only research for 10 minutes. And that's more so just to keep an uh, like a understanding of what's going on with the marketplace. So like if you consistently do research for your brand, you'll see, okay, Hey, you know, I see a lot of uh, co or competitors are starting to capitalize on a particular trend. And a lot of people, when they're getting started, they'll get frustrated. How's my competitors always three or four steps forward ahead of me. Well, one of the easiest ways is just add that as your research. Every time you research, you kind of check up on them. Maybe a quick five-minute stroll. That's it. Um, also, too, another thing I didn't even get to talk about is I'll also start looking at, so like sports bra, we've kind of identified a couple of different types of girls. So, um, you know, we, girls that are wearing this for running, girls that are wearing this for high-impact sports, girls that are wearing this for the gym, uh, girls that are wearing this for yoga. So what I could try to do is like start searching up the general niche as well. Um, so like yoga, for example, I can start going through and I can watch a bunch of content on yoga, particularly for our customer audience right there. And that's also going to allow me to better understand the types of visuals that grab their attention. Um, it's also going to kind of showcase me a little bit more of like types of activities they're doing in this particular product itself. 
Now, you'll notice a lot of them not wearing even the sports bra that we're selling or other type of sports bras. But we know for a fact that, hey, they typically wear sports bras here um, due to the um, just from the research of what we're, we're hearing from the other sports bras and stuff like that. So um, we even search up like gym content, for example, they're just gym. And then like, obviously, that's pretty vague. So then you can go to like running. Um, you can even go to like running um, men or women. I don't really know what's going to pop up here. So I'm trying to be a little uh, safe. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you can go a little bit deeper into that right there of um, you know the type of person running. And then you can kind of better observe the niche. Again, I'm not really looking at like, oh, how do I sell this person on my product? I'm looking at more of just what some of the trends I'm noticing with some of the desires of these people. So that way, as I understand this, I can better leverage this inside of my script to um, get people to, um, to buy it. And then also to another key thing here that I want to point out is that as I'm doing this research and observing the marketplace, I can start to understand different types of people, right? Um, so like, I know this person right here, I think he's called the modern uh, primal. I've seen some of the stuff on TikTok already or Instagram already. So like this dude's like a biohacker type of guy. So, you know, his person is not really personality, but um, like his type of content is gym content, running and stuff like that. But from the perspective of like biohacking and everything. So this biohacking community is growing pretty large. So I can start looking at potentially even positioning like the perfect sports bra for the girl who's big into biohacking or the biohacker hacker girly, for example. I can start calling out these different types of people. Um, so that way I'm not just targeting girls who run. Um, you know, another example is uh, you'll you'll see different types of people in the gym. Um, you know, I know like in the gym TikTok, uh, there's been a few memes about, you know, the more of like the emo type of person and just, you know, the gym bro. And then like the athletic type of dude that like, you know, looks like he plays sports, for example, like just the different types of people. And then you can start looking at um, what are those types of people and, and can we position our brand to fit one of those specific identities? So that way we're not just going after the whole market itself. We're just going after that one particular type of identity right there. Um, as far as that, it's more of just guess and check right there. That's stuff that we write down and we test with different ad creatives. Um, uh, there's really no like scientific formula I have or anything like that for like, oh, here's how we can determine the number of people in this particular niche. It's just, hey, this is a common occurrence of types of people in here. Um, let's go a little bit more specific and focus on identity. And that's a stage five sophistication. And then from there, um, we can look at creating some creatives that appeal to that particular identity itself. Um, in the marketplace. So um, I know that was a lot. Did y'all understand that? <laughs> yeah, a quick question. Go for so it. If, you're doing, if you're doing market research every time you write an ad concept, aren't you just, what, do, what is it that you're saying that's new? Aren't you just seeing the same stuff you already know? Yeah, and it's going to allow me to, but you got to understand, like if I do research, like, yeah, this video, some of these videos were posted in like 2023, but if I do research every session, that increases my chances of finding new ideas. And then also to research puts you in the right mindset. There's sometimes that I do a research session, I get nothing out of it, but because I'm seeing a lot of workout stuff, I'm getting in the right mindset. So when I go to write, I'm in that right, that right mindset before I start writing. So it's almost like a warm up session before a workout. That's also how I like to look at it. And would you do it based on like the specific, does, like, would you know something about the ad you're about to make before you do the market research? Or do you just go in like completely raw? Just, you know what I mean? Does the research inspire yeah. the ad? So itself? there will be research sessions you do that are targeted. So like, for example, right now, I don't know shit about this particular niche we're about to write about. So I'm just kind of consuming a little bit of everything. Um, and I'm getting a bunch of ideas that we can nail on. And once I actually find an idea that works and a desire that works, and I start to scale it up, I want to dig deeper into that desire and start looking more and, and have like a more specific, um, like research session. If that makes sense. Yeah. So you have like a little bit of an idea before you go into it. Usually. Correct. Yeah. In the beginning, I'm just trying to figure out all the possibilities we can go. And that way we can start creating ad for all these possibilities and that's why I always like when I start, like if it's a brand new account, never touched. That's why I always launched those like six or 12 ads at once, those unique ads. 
Um, and then from there, I can start to figure out, okay, like this is working. Let's go create, just do some more research sessions based off this specific type of element right here. So that way I can become the master at inflammation. I, I will know the inflammation desire better than anyone else in the marketplace. That's, a, that's allowing me to write significantly better ads. You said 30 minutes before the ad, by the way, usually. Oh, uh, wait, say that again. How long is the market research before you do the ad usually? Um, look, there's some sessions that's five, 10 minutes long. You know, yeah. like I already kind of have a good idea of what I want to write about. I'm just kind of putting myself in the right mindset. Um, there's other sessions, like, like I said, if this is a brand new client that just came on board, I'll spend up to eight hours before I write an ad. So it just kind of depends. And I won't do all eight hours at once. Like, you know, like for us, like we don't get ads live for clients for up to two weeks because the first week is just a week of research and ideation and stuff like that to come up with the ideas. So then the second week is when we actually put those in production. Then the third week is when we actually launch them for the client. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Cool. Everyone on track with that? Everyone understood that? All right. Didn't realize how much time we we're also who just gone through. So try to move this far a little bit more. Um, all right. So now we got the idea. Now we're going through a couple of research sessions. Uh, we start having a bunch of ideas start going through. Um, like I said, this is looks pitiful compared to what I normally do. Because like I said, I normally do about <laughs> up to eight hours before I write the first one. So I'll, I'll usually have a little bit more around this. Um, another key thing I really want to point out for you guys is when I see the, the same thing keep popping up over and over and over, I'll just go make like some marks riot, just like some tally marks. Um, and that'll allow me to kind of also gauge uh, the strip of that particular desire right there. So like we already seen, I think <laughs> probably at least 20, 30 times now during this little research session we did as a group together that a lot of girls struggle with the problem of uh, sports bras not giving them enough support. Um, that's a big one right there. So, you know, for our particular product, we can't really position us that. So we're gonna have to kind of work around that. Um, but that's, that's something right there that, uh, uh, Jose, I know you said that you had another brand though, that actually, or another type of sports bra that does fit to that, right? Yes. Just another, another style in the same brand. Okay, cool. So it's another skew, but it's, um, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just another product you said. Yes. All right, cool. So you would be very smart <laughs> after this call to go start creating some ads for that particular sports bra um, that has the extra support. Let's see if we can find it real quick. That one, the first one. First one right here? Yeah. Cool. And this is not one of your best sellers right now? Uh, I would say the second, the top that sell the most, the second one. Second one? All right, cool. Yeah, so like let's just let's just use this one for an example to finish this off. So you know we we've seen a lot of good stuff about support of sports bras since we've seen this. We've seen uh, obviously a clear hey, if we look at our market real quick, we've seen a lot of girls struggle with this. So here, this is something that you want to do of like, all right, this is a common desire people have, and there's not really that great of a solution if people are constantly kind of posting about it and stuff like that then that's something you would actively want to go ahead and start creating ads for. Ads for. Um, especially too, if it's more of like that colder market, that's not a colder market, but blue ocean market in that case right there. Um, does that make sense for you? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, next thing. Um, once I start getting some ideas down of where I would go next, um, again, this is more of just like different things from research. Um, I want to start getting clear on who am I writing to? So, Nick, you know, one, one question regarding to the product. Go for it. Um, when you have an e-commerce with many products and also accessories, et cetera, um, how do you drive sales to the other products? Because it happens that I promoted a few, just a few products, the best sellers on mm -hmm. the ads, but those were mostly the only ones that are selling but but then we have a lot of we have a lot of inventory of other stuff you know yeah so you're not worried about right now your only goal is to increase your new customer acquisition right now for your uh -huh. other products that's where we leverage email sms um even catalog ads as well but the biggest problem brand owners make is that oh we have a lot of products i need to promote them all and the problem with when you try to promote them all at once, um, you don't really promote any. 
<laughs> so I much prefer, let's pick the one or two products that are selling well and have really good chance of success. You start with those and you push those hard. Um, then from there, as you're scaling those up, then you can start looking at your other products. Um, you know, can as we increase new customers, let's sell those existing customers on more of our existing products itself. Uh huh. I see. Yeah. Because if you add five to ten times more new customers on a daily basis right now coming into your business, you would also increase your returning customers by five to ten x as well, which would sell the other inventory. Okay. So that's how I like to look at it. Um, I know like for like Icon Amsterdam, we had 60% new customers on a daily basis and 40% returning customers every single day. That's Amazing. a lot. Yeah. So new customer acquisition, you can spend a lot more at close to break even because you that just focuses on growing the business and then returning customers is where you make your profits at. All right. So here's where you want to get clear on who we write into, what do they want? How's our product help them? Um, you know, I still don't have a full 100% confidence in this, but so far we have um, gym. I wouldn't even say gym girls. Based off the stuff I saw, it was a variety of different things they saw. I saw like runners. I saw uh, sports girls, like actual sports girls. Um, and then I guess you could say like gym girls. Um, I know... Jose, I know you said something about like, here, our product is more for like everyday use and stuff like that. Um, I just personally didn't see any of that content from my research. So while I do respect that particular input you gave us, um, I'm also going to be more concerned about what does the market want? Because mm -hmm. just showing everyday use that doesn't really, you know, just them walking around, it's like, that's a good desire, right? But also, too, at the same time, it's what does the market want? Because the, what the market wants is going to allow me to better, like, put my raft down a, a river that's flowing versus just a dead body of water, if that makes sense. Yeah. So that's the first thing. Next thing, um, get clear, female, 25-year-old. Um, I've stayed away from trying to do vague things like, female 20 to 50 or 20 to 30 because just i don't know it's hard to picture that so we say female 25 year old you can also get into the types of like ethnicities and stuff like that as well english um spanish etc um i'm just gonna do for this one uh gym girls um i would even say gym girls is also too vague um let's say yeah, I can say it like that, gym girls. I always try to be clear if I can. So like, for example, girls who are into lifting weights, 25 years old, USA. You know, like that's a lot better than just gym girls because, you know, again, are they just going to the gym and running? That's going to be a completely different than girls who go to the gym and like do like bodybuilding or like lifting weights and stuff like that. All right. Next thing is how does our product help them? So, you know, biggest desire I saw across the marketplace was support. And uh, Jose, I know you said your main one right here is not supportive or like, like super supportive, right? Excuse me? Your main product right here is not so super supportive, right? No, it's not. Okay. So this product is not super supportive. Um, I would say the color itself, pretty standard compared to like some of the other colors in the marketplace. Um, what is like, I would say the biggest unique feature of your product that people love it for? Uh, they love the back and they also love that it's comfortable for when they use it for a long time, mm -hmm. they don't feel the pressure. Mm, okay. So yeah. you're saying, yeah, you can wear it for longer in a sense, like it's more comfortable for longer term use. Yeah, like for people that go work out and then and stay in gym clothes all day. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's see. Let's go into... Also, they love that we receive a lot of comments that they like uh, what I just said combined with the, 
the colors that are plain so they can I don't know put a leather jacket on top or something like that and and they don't need to change from the gym clothes from the gym clothes you know got it got it all right cool yeah I really like the more comfortable for longer use right there yeah. sweet so you can go into like the versatility and stuff like that of wearing this exactly. yeah, yeah. Verse uh all right. So now we got who we're writing to, how's our product help them, what do they want? Here's where we'll start writing down our hooks. Um, a couple different ways I like to write my hooks. Number one, and it's just templates. So I already gave you guys this in the course right here. This is just a whole bunch of different hooks, um, like patterns as well that you can leverage. Uh, you don't need to use all of them, you know, just kind of go through, measure the size of the claim. So for us, like we could have two times more, let's see, two X more comfortable than the leading competitor. Boom. Or you use it for double the time or something like that. Correct. Yeah. So measure the size. Two times more comfortable than the leading competitor. Um, use it longer than the leading competitor. Use it all the time. Here, you're just writing shit down that makes sense. Now, big thing that we also have to look at here is like, what's the main desire? So like, we're talking a lot about comfort right here. And then we're also talking about uh, the use for like how time um, so I would really try to hit on like the main one. So the main desire, like we've identified so far is like comfortable. That's one thing we've seen from a little bit of the research. Um, so I'd be looking at writing down hooks that have that, that comfort side right there, or give people that message right there of comfort. So I'll go through here. I'll start writing down different hooks, uh, taking with some of the research I have and just writing down different hooks. Um, another route I like to do for hooks is looking at previous winners. So I already give you guys kind of like some of our top ads from 2023 of like pretty much all winning ads right here. Um, so you can also take some of these hooks and rewrite them with your research as well. So uh, let's see, let's look at like simple painting, for example. I saw they had that good one where it's like, uh, this is my girlies who need a girl's night soon. Um, this is for my gym girlies who need a more comfortable sports bra. I know that's not technical right English, but there we go. So what I'll do, start writing out all these. And like I said, my goal is to get to about 20 or 30 hooks um, that I've written down. Also another one I completely forgot to add since I've done this is also to uh, looking at um, competitor or like research hooks as well. So when I did my research, I wrote down a couple different hooks um, inside of here. So POV, like that you found the perfect supportive sports bra. So like, these are things I found from research. So I can I'll start writing some of these down as well. POV, you found the most comfortable sports bra. There we go. Can so, you name drop competitor in your ad? Like, uh, I wouldn't recommend it unless you have a good legal team. The gray area to, to, to do it correctly is where all you do is showcase the features of the competitor and showcase the features of you. And you're not saying good or bad. You're just saying, hey, look, you know, this agency produces 10 ads a week for you. Our agency produces 15. Is there any false claims there? No, because that agency really does that. And our agency does this. Um, but if you say, hey, this agency's trash, blah, blah, blah. This is why you need to use us. That's where like, you're gonna have a, a lawsuit on your hand immediately. All right, everyone keep a track of this. Any questions as we move forward? All right, cool. All right, so next thing, after we write down all of our hooks, so we just wrote down a few of them here. Uh, what I wanna do is I wanna start looking at these hooks and I wanna figure out, all right, which ones call out our ideal audience, which ones make me curious to want to know more and which ones imply a benefit. And my perfect hook is gonna have all three of these. So. Let's just look at ours real quick that we wrote. We wrote. Is there any that grabbed my attention? Uh, I like this one. This one's pretty good. Um, I do like this one. 
And then I do like this one. So now I'm just simply looking at here. All right, do they imply a benefit? Yeah, this implies a benefit. This is implying a benefit. And this is implying a benefit. And what I mean by implying a benefit, that means if I look at this ad, I'm going to get some type of takeaway from it that's going to benefit my life. Next thing, is it curious or does it call out my ideal audience? Um, I would say this one does a really good job at being more specific of who my audience is. Uh, this mm -hmm. is for my gym girlies who need a more comfortable sports bra. So this one does. Um, this one does not at all. <laughs> if you read two times more comfortable than a lazy competitor, that could be <laughs> anything right there. That could be a fucking couch. That's all I care. So this does not call out my ideal audience. Um, POV, you found the most comfortable sports bra. Uh, so something that I've learned just with this little bit of research we just did is that uh, sports bra is worn for a variety of different types of activities. And there's some sports bras that have a lot more uh, support versus other sports bras that do not. Um, so, you know, the problem with this one right here is that this one kind of just goes after every girl and not specific to a type of girl right here. So that becomes an issue. Um, gym girlies is a lot better because it's a little bit more specific. It's not saying, Hey, you know, um, basketball girlies or soccer girlies, for example, or, you know, some of these sports that are a little bit more movement in it. That's going to need a little bit more support for that. So I really like this one. Um, but I am a fan of this one and I do want to tweak this. So again, that's another part. You can tweak it a bit. You found the most POV. You found the most comfortable sports girl, sports bra, POV. Um, let's see, for the gym. Let's do that. There we go. POV, you found the most comfortable sports bra for the gym. All right. Now it's kind of makes me, the POV adds that little bit of curiosity. It's just like, ooh, what? What is this? And also, too, what's the most comfortable sports bra for the gym? So we have a benefit. We have a, um, you know, ideal audience. I don't need to say gym girls because we're going to be only targeting gym girls and we'll use the visual of girls in it. So like, and, and also to a sports bra is kind of specific to a girl. Um, I don't really know any guys that wear it. So I don't really need to call out the, you know, the type of gender there. Um, so POV, you found the most comfortable sports bra for the gym. I like that. So what you're going to do, you're going to write down your hook. Boom. There we go. And then now we can start the actual ad creation process. So next thing we need to decide is type of ad, photo or video. I get this question all the time. Nick, do I do a photo or a video? When to do a photo, when to do a video? Let's just kind of look at our hook real quick. POV, you found the most comfortable sports bra for the gym. How would, like, for me personally, I would do a video for that because it's gonna be very difficult for me to articulate that in a photo. Does that make sense for y'all? Yeah. Okay. So I would go, I would go for um, a video for this one right here. So you can, I always like to do something like video. Let me just do add concept. All right, cool. So we'll go with video. And then the next aspect right there is we can look at tone of voice. So this is something that uh, we'll tend not to see. We won't always see. Um, but for this, are we going to have someone saying like, first person point of view, or are we going to kind of do more of a narrative? Um, narrative can be something where it's just like kind of just talking over the video and talking or saying a script over it, um, but not in like a first person point of view perspective right there. That's the easiest way I can explain it. First person point of view. Um, I just found this new sports bra. I love it so much. I go to the gym. I use it. I have such a great time using this product. That's more first person point of view right there. Um, here, I'm actually going to go with the first person point of view aspect right here. So we'll have like, I don't know, I guess you could say just like a girl talking about how she just found the most comfortable sports bra on, in the gym. And then from here, we can start getting ideas. All right. I want a girl. I want 25 year old, 25 year old female who lift, lifts weights in the gym. All right. And we're going to start going after this. So here, a couple things we can do. So we have our hook. Now we're going to start writing our rough draft. Now, again, rough draft is going to sound horrible. It's perfectly okay for the rough draft to be the worst thing you've ever seen in your life. It's 
totally okay. A um, couple of ways I like to do the rough draft. So way number one is just kind of what I'm imagining in my head. So I found this, I made this, I found the most comfortable sports bra online. And uh, let's see, I, found, I love it so much. Every time I go to the gym, this is my favorite one to pick out. Um, da 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 da. Uh, do, 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 do. Habilito la cuenta de nuevo. No, ya. Ay, qué segundo, no, nunca la borro. Solamente quien está poniendo cosas. ¿Viste? Va a ser suyo ese calor. All right, cool. So again, rough draft would be terrible. Accept that. Just roll with it. Um, the idea is just to get something on paper. Now, another way I like to do the rough draft. So like, here's my way, just tossing something on the paper. Another way I like to do my rough draft is going to uh, Claude, that AI, um, or chat GPT, uh, either one. And basically giving your idea to Claude or giving your idea to chat GPT. Um, Claude is something new. I just discovered, um, I have a copywriter friend who trains basically the top 1% of copywriters, uh, in the industry. And this is, this is the one that they're all leveraging. Um, but ChatGPT just works as well. And then you can go ahead and just start typing up your concept. Um, I need a, let's see, please take the hook. All right, let's see how that works. Ooh, okay, this is actually not too bad. Uh, continue. All right, cool. Let's go through this. Boom, I'm gonna copy this. Do, do. And this will be the other version. Oop. All right, is your sports bra just not cutting it for your workouts lately? I know the struggle. I thought all sports bras were created equally, but I was so wrong. I recently discovered Cloud9 sports bra has just been a total game changer. As soon as I put it on, I knew this is the most comfortable sports bra I've ever tried. It was just the right amount of stretch and compression to support me through everything from weight training to cardio sessions. This seamless design prevents any chafing or irritation so I can focus on my workout, not my uncomfortable bra. After the, and the moisture wicking fabric helps me keep cool and dry even intensity. All right, cool. So this is actually pretty good. Um, so what I'll do here is I'm going to clean this up just a little bit because number one, it's not even using our hook. Um, and I don't care for this too much right here because it's kind of going more into like the problem and we're going after like more of the benefits with the headline. Um, let's see. I recently discovered the rack and it's been a total game changer. As soon as I put it on, I knew it's the most comfortable sports bra I've ever tried. As the right amount of stretch and compression. Okay, cool. So this is good for rough draft. All right, again, rough draft. We just want to get that down on paper. Now, next thing we're going to do is the strategy rewrite. All right, strategy rewrite. So... Jose, a couple of questions really quick for you. Um, from a feature standpoint right here, is there anything that's missing? So like, does it have moisture wicking fabric for this product? Moisture what? Does it prevent moisture? Like, keep, does it help the uh, person? Like, no, 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 no. The fabric is really good. Like good material, good composition, but... Um, it's not dry fit or anything like that. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, so that's but, gonna be removed. You know, people love the the back of the top. I think that's what called attention the most. The back because it's 
open and, and feel feels free, you know. I got Especially it. for the summer. We we're in summertime here. Got it. Got it. Okay. Let's see. What we can do here is the might work. Put my design. You look in the form form of the other. The further. All right. The, the um over shape of the bra. That's what people like a lot. Shape. Okay, cool. Yeah, and, and that's that's gonna be because of clothing, that's gonna be all educated in the visuals itself. Um okay. so we'll showcase a lot of that in the visuals itself. Um I just want to make sure, yeah, like some of the key things that we talked about there for a second just wasn't inaccurate in terms of uh, how the product works. Mm -hmm. So all right, next thing uh, going through here is the strategy rewrite. So there's a couple things that we go through for the strategy here. So we're going to rewrite this whole thing. Um, as you can see, I already started kind of making my edits to it. But next thing, does it convey a clear, concise message? So when you uh, go through this script, is it easy to understand what's being sold here? Um, I've been, I've received ads from clients. I've received ads from students before where, it's all over the place. And it's just like, wait, what the fuck is being sold here? So that's the first thing. So convey a clear, concise message. Next thing, does it show undeniable proof the desire being satisfied? That's um, this document right here. I'll send this over to y'all where it goes through all the different types of ways to showcase the product being desired. And we want to kind of filter those in. It's kind of like seasoning when you're cooking food. You don't want to overdo it with all of them, but you just want to have, add a couple in there. Next thing, is there any objections that people have? Um, so I know support's been a big, a big objection people have, so we can cover that in a second. Um, and then next one, is there any logic to back up any big claims? Um, this is, there's no logic we need to add in here. Uh, maybe if we were hitting one like the, uh, the medical insurance client, we had to provide some logical uh, explanation of um, how the, you know, like I would say like uh, the bills are being denied and stuff like that. So, um, so I would go through here and I would start looking at some of these, um, easy ways to just kind of split your screen when you go through this, boom, and just going through this and like looking at, okay, when will they get their desire satisfied? Uh, how they'll get their desire satisfied. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Oh, good one right here. Prove the superiority of desire being satisfied better by your product versus competitor. Um, as soon as I put on new, the most comfortable spot I ever tried. Uh, let's see. Boom. Tried so many others that had me hot and sweating, but this open back design keeps me cool and comfortable during my workouts. Ooh, I like that. All right. So I'll go through here. Like I said, just add them as you, as you can. Uh, speed of which they'll get their desire satisfied. Um, you know, that could be something like as soon as you put this on and start your workout, I mean, it's it's almost instant game changer right there or, or like instantly makes you feel more comfortable. Some of them just simply won't make sense as well. And that's totally okay. Um, size of which they'll get their desire satisfied. Uh, um, okay, feel. So obviously comfortable is a vague term. So like what's a little bit more uh, around the comfort? And that's like the cool feature right there. That's why I talked about like um, how 
it had me hot and sweating, but this open back design keeps me cool and comfortable during my workout. So that's also like another one right there. So people kind of feel it, um, smell, nothing really for smell, nothing for taste as well. Hope you guys are not eating sports bras. Um, it's kind of weird. Uh, but <laughs> so that's, that's a couple different ways to look at, um, Oh, benefits of their desire being satisfied. So what is a benefit of them being cool and comfortable during their workout? Um, I love how cool and comfortable, like, let's see. Okay, so I tried so many other sport others that had me hot and sweating. This open back design keeps me cool and comfortable during my workout. So what is a benefit of them being cool and comfortable during their workout? I can easily go shopping and change okay. after the gym. So you can see right there, there's a benefit of them not being hot and sweaty in the gym due to their sports bra um, and like being uncomfortable and stuff like that mm -hmm. after the gym. There you go. Uh, let's see. From a should we should we try to get them all or or just focus on a few? Just a few. It's it's like like I said, it's like seasoning some food, seasoning a steak. You want to add a bit of salt and pepper, but you don't want to add the whole bottle. <laughs> it's gonna be very nasty. <laughs> so, and some of these just won't make sense for your product, right? And that's totally okay. Because it's not about tossing in a bunch. It's about sprinkling in a few of them. And, um, you know, this is a great process right here just to simply do without even writing a script. Just sit down and start thinking about, like, what are different ways I could show my show their desire being achieved with your product? So, you know, this is a very visual one. So, like, you know, we'll be having a lot of different visuals in this particular script right here for working out. Um, but that's all you got to look at. So, all right, POV found the most comfortable sports bra for the gym. I recently discovered the Rack sports bra and it's been a total game changer. As soon as I put it on, I knew it's the most comfortable sports bra I've ever tried. I've tried so many others that had me hot and sweating, but this open back design keeps me cool and comfortable during my workouts. I can easily go shopping without having to go home and change first after the gym. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure about that. Um, it was just, it has just the right amount of stretch and compression to support me through everything from weight training to cardio sessions. Okay, close. We're, we're showcasing a little bit more of that. Um, the open back design prevents any chafing or irritation so I can focus on my workout, not my uncomfortable um, sports bra. Thanks to the Rack Sports Bra, going to the gym is actually comfortable now, is, or is comfortable now, is actually comfortable now. Uh, I like actually. Um, I don't have to dread getting my sweat on this on the on because this bra. Oh, good lord! I don't have to dread getting my sweat on because this bra makes me feel supported and confident to push myself hard. Game on, Jim! I'm ready for you. Okay, this is decent. I like this. Um, we'll, we'll figure something else with this. Um. Uh, There we go. Cool. So that's our strategy rewrite right there. Anyone have any questions around this before I go to the next? All right, cool. Um, obviously, I didn't address any objections. I also didn't. The only main objection I saw was um, more of like a, I guess you could say the potential support there. Uh, but we kind of cover it for has just the right amount for like these types of activities. So obviously for a girl that's on like basketball, like some of these sports and stuff like that, that'd be a little bit different. Um, all right, cool. So now we'll do another rewrite for this. And I know we we're taking a lot longer than expected. So I really hope you guys are getting value out of this. <laughs> but absolutely. There's a lot of time that goes into this. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like 
when you add in just the eight, six to eight hours of research in the beginning, like, but this is how you write good scripts. All right, next one. Is it easy to read? So um, the reason why I say it's easy to read, even though it's going to be a script of someone talking, it should be easy to read, though, because if it's easy to read, it's likely easy to say. Um, next thing, is it boring? And next thing, does it have any big uh, descriptive or impact words? So POV found the most comfortable sports bra for the gym. I recently discovered the rack sports bra and it's been a total game changer. All right. I cannot stand this word right here. And I will criticize, I'll, I'll publicly shame any copywriter of my team that uses this. Why? Because one, it's, it's overused. And two, can any of you guys right now visualize total game changer in your head? You can't because it's just, you know, it's just a, a random word almost in a way. Um, so we're going to re we're going to redo that. We're going to put a better, uh, descriptive or a bigger impact word for that. Um, as soon as I put it on, I knew this was the most comfortable sports bra I've ever tried. I've tried so many others that had me hot and sweating, but this open Mac design keeps me cool and comfortable during my workouts. I can easily go shopping without having to go home and change first. It was just the right amount of stretch and depression to support me through everything from weight training to cardio sessions. The Oathmack design prevents chafing irritation. So, okay, I'm actually going to delete this because I feel like it just kind of repeats some things a little bit. Boom. Thanks to the Rack Sports Bra, going to the gym is actually comfortable now. I don't have to dread getting my sweat on because this bra makes me feel supported and conf confident to push myself harder. Okay, let's see. I almost want to change confident to comfortable because we brought it comfortable a few times already. Don't have to dread getting my sweat on because this bra makes me feel supported and comfortable to push myself harder. I don't have to dread myself. I don't have to dread getting my sweat on. Okay, this is hard to read a little bit. I don't dread getting my sweat on. I'll do this a lot too with ChatGPT is just <laughs> use that to like kind of help, help out with, um, you know, the thinking process real quick. So like if you needed a way to other way to say a particular word, great way to do it right here. Okay. Fear is a little bit better. I don't have to fear getting my sweat on. I don't have to fear getting my sweat on because this bra makes me feel supported and comfortable to push myself harder. Okay. Support it. We can understand that. Comfortable. We can understand that. Stop having uncomfortable workouts and get this sports bra today. Um, thanks to the rack sports bra going to is actually comfortable now. Let me dismiss that. It has the right amount of stretch and depression to support me through everything from weight training to, to uh, cardio sessions. All right. I don't really like the right amount. It's just the right amount. I'm going to say it has the perfect amount of stretch and compression to support me through, through everything from weight training to cardio sessions. I'm also going to say support me through weight training and cardio sessions. So support me through weight training and cardio sessions. As a perfect amount of stretching compressions, and support me through weight training and cardio sessions. All right, cool. Um, I can easily go shopping without having to go home and change first. Let's see. I tried so many others that had me hot and sweating, but this Oakmac design keeps me cool and comfortable during my workout. I can easily go shopping without having to go home and change first. Okay, let's see. Grocery Nick, I always have to go there after a workout. What's that? Is that I you? worked in the shot. Sorry, I have COVID and I'm dying. <laughs> well, hopefully you feel better, buddy. Shopping after without having to change. Without having to change. We're shopping after having to change from my workout. All right. POV found the most comfortable sports bra for the gym. I recently discovered the Rack Sports Bra and I recently discovered Rack Sports Bra, which has been a total game changer. As soon as I put it on, I knew it's the most comfortable sports bra I've ever tried. I've tried so many others that had me hot and sweating, but this open back design keeps me cool and comfortable, cool and comfortable during my workout. So I can easily go, can quickly go shopping after without having without changing let's see this is not going jumping without changing from my workouts 
go shopping. That change from workout. Yeah, that's the only way that makes sense. We go shopping afterwards about changing from workout. All right, cool. It's so a perfect amount of stretch impression. All right, cool. So we need to do. All right, there we go. Completely upgraded my workout experience. So I recently discovered the Rack Sports Bra has been a total game changer. Let's change that to which has been, which has completely upgraded my workout experience. All right, cool. Recently discovered the Rack Sports Bra, which has completely upgraded my workout experience. As soon as I put it on, I knew it's the most comfortable sports bra I've ever tried. I've tried so many others, so many others that have me hot and sweating, sweat and sweating, but this open back design keeps me cool and comfortable during my workouts. So I can quickly go shopping after without changing from my workouts. There's definitely a better way. I would tinker around with this for a lot longer. It's a better way to say this. Might even, I might even need to add a sentence or two, but it's definitely a better way to say this. Instead of quickly, you can say easily. Uh, instead of quickly? That's what I would, that's what I would suppose. All right, cool. So I can easily go shopping after without changing from my workouts. I'll do that. Has a perfect amount of stretch and compression to support me through weight training and cardio sessions. Thanks to Rack Sports Bra, going to the gym is actually comparable now. I don't have to fear getting my sweat on. I don't like that. Thanks to Rack Sports Bra, going to the gym is actually comparable now. I don't like that either. Delete that. Stop having like other workouts and get the sports bra today. You know, um, when we used to record ads with influencers, we we just go to the place and figure it out over there. <laughs> and wait, say that again. Yeah, when we used to record ads with influencers, yeah, we would have an idea, but mostly figure it out in the right there, you know. Dude, on but the spot we'll filming, on the spot filming can be really good. Um, I've seen some people perform some amazing ads on the spot filming. The problem is, is that it's you're just kind of showing up that day and hoping you have something that pops in your head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what happened. And and actually, most of the time, we come out with the same video, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You can, like, what we'll do is, is like, is when we're working with a content creator for a little while, we'll even ask them, what are some of the other ideas you have? And kind of give them a little free realm after they've already rewrote a few ads for us. Or like, actually, they've already filmed a few ads for us um, that we scripted out. So... All right, cool. So the only one I didn't really hit on is the boring aspect. I find this one's pretty good, but it, it definitely could be a little bit more entertaining. I'd probably give this like a seven, six out of 10 for the uh, entertaining side. Um, it is easy to read. We cleaned that up. Um, does have a couple descriptive big impact words in here. Um, you know, it's also like not a really huge, like hard clean product. Like, you know, I don't need to say like, you know, blow past revenue barriers in your business by using this particular product or something like that. So, um, so it's a very visual product, but we do want to still hit on a couple of key things right there. Um, cool. So rewrote for style and last rewrite we'll do is rewrite for flow. Um, this is just literally there's times where we won't touch anything on the rewrite for flow. Um, this is literally just me doing that kind of final like quality check. So when I read this script, I, I actively read these scripts multiple times out loud uh, while I'm editing them. And I want to make sure that the script just flows. There's, there's, there's no parts where it's like, wait, eh, that's hard to read. Because what happens is that's also going to affect the flow of the script when it actually um, is, is said. So you now I'll go through it. And then I'll also look at cutting any fat. So I kind of did this a step earlier in this, this uh, rewrite for style. Y'all saw me cut out like this. And then like it was one other thing that I just cut out. So I kind of jumped to this a little too soon. 
Um, but that's that's the flow stage right there. I'm cutting anything fat, cutting cutting anything that doesn't really make it flow well. And then I'm just kind of maybe doing that last final tweak. So read this one more time. POV, you found the most comfortable sports bra for the gym. I recently discovered the Rack Sports Bra has completely upgraded my workout experience. As soon as I put it on, I knew it's the most comfortable sports bra I've ever tried. I've tried so many others that have me hot and sweating, but this open mac design keeps me cool and comfortable during my workouts. So I can easily go shopping afterward without changing from my workouts. It has the perfect amount of stretch and compression to support me through weight training and cardio sessions. Thanks to Rack Sports Bra, going to them is actually comfortable now. Stop having uncomfortable workouts and get this sports bra today. All right, I actually am not a fan of this. I'm going to cut this. I just don't think it needs to be said. People already kind of know if their sports bras have them hot and sweating. Um, but when we talk about this OFMAC design, people are immediately going to see that. So POV, you found the most comfortable sports bra for the gym. I recently discovered the Rack Sports Bra. Let's see. I'm actually just going to dupe that real quick just to make it uh, a little easier for the next stage. POV, you found the most comfortable sports bra for the gym. I recently discovered the Rack Sports Bra, which has completely upgraded my workout experience. As soon as I put it on, I knew it was the most comfortable sports bra I've ever tried. This open back... This open back design keeps me cool and comfortable during my workout. So I can easily go shopping afterward without changing from my workouts. Yeah, this is definitely, it needs to be tweaked more. But again, I would, you know, I, for the sake of today's call, I don't want to spend another 30 minutes just on this one line. Um, that's the perfect amount of stretch and compression to support me through weight training and cardio sessions. Thanks to Rack Sports Bra, going to the gym is actually comfortable now. Stop having uncomfortable workouts and get this sports bra today. All right. I give us a pretty solid script right here. I'd say this is, you know, six or a seven right here for the amount of time that I've got to spin on it today. Um, before I go to the next stage, anyone have any questions uh, so far of these stages? I just kind of hop through. Yeah. Right. How, how, how might you make it not boring? One of the ways is just the type of things you say. Um, like if I spent like three or four lines just consistently talking about that open back design and like the technology and the open back design it's like i'm selling a sports bra to girls who care a lot about the just look and the feel and just show me a lot of visuals about it i don't need to sit there and talk about the design and how it was designed and all that key thing right there so it's more about the types of things you talk about that's a very easy one um and then the other one is just about you know would you want me to sit here and talk about the problem of all the sports bras I've tried for five lines? Or would you rather me showcase five different examples of me loving the sports bra on a daily basis? And it's like more examples of the girl loving and things like that. Then like the final level is where you start to add in things where it has a little bit more of like, uh, you know, like if you watch some of the sport, the Super Bowl commercials this week and had a few that were very emotionally compelling ones. Uh, I know one of my favorite ones was um, the guy who uh, had the voice assist um, who was blind. I thought that was pretty emotional right there. Um, and then also you look at like some of the Harmon brother ads that have a lot of comedy to it. And that's like very high level right there. Like you're paying easily over a hundred dollars an hour for a copywriter, write Something like that for you. So look at the easy stuff first about the types of things you talk about. That'll keep your attention or not right there. So um, cool. So now that we got our pretty much our final script right here, uh, what we'll do is then we do the last stage uh, before the copywriter sends it off, which is visually articulate each scene. So I look at this as scene one, scene two, scene three, scene four, scene five, like each one, these are scenes right here. Um, so easy way for this, it's just to go through this and ask yourself. All right, POV, you found the most comfortable sports bra for the gym. Right now in the time, right now in your head, what visual pops up in your head right now? Anyone want to say it? Girl, yeah, yeah. sports bra and working out like on the girl in the lady. gym. Okay, girl in the gym. What is she doing? Mm. Getting ready to work out. I would, I would film the <laughs> like a close up. Of the girl, I think that calls the attention, like the eyes or something. You know, I mean, of course that you can see the bra, mm. but looking, she's looking at the uh, the camera face. You know, 
face to face. Okay, that's a face to face. Okay, um, so that's one. What's what's another way? Someone, I think someone else said. I think Zach was that you that said about working out. Yeah, just getting ready to work out. But maybe she's like looking in the mirror, trying to. Yeah, and run you first, me. With bra. A close up of the material of the bra. Okay. Okay. Those are all really good ones right there. Um, let's see. I like, I actually like this one close up of the material. And then this one, girl in the gym working out mid distance shot. There's different, there's different, if you really get technical with this, uh, if you go study the different types of camera angles, there's like, you know, like a close up shot and there's like landscape type shots. I'm not gonna go too into that for this, but uh, gym, girl in the gym working out, mid distance shot. Um, what type of workout is she doing? Is she doing bicep curls? Is she squatting? Is she, you know, just like, what, what, what's, what is she doing? something where she's like bouncing you know what i mean to okay show the support. bouncing um, maybe she's doing some burpees a, ba yeah. a back a back workout so you can see the, the back that it looks good okay okay so let's do let's do both of those so um one of the visual hooks uh visual one can be um girl doing burpees and then visual hook two can be girl uh, doing lat pull downs close up of her back. All right, cool. Nick, do you ever just run it through chat GBT to give you all the visuals? Oh, yeah, I do. Okay. Um, I have a quick question Um, because I have to go shortly. Is yeah. there somewhere we can download the diagram, the script, and maybe like a cutout video of just this course so we can have it, you know, on our computers to easily access? Here, here's what I'm going to do for you. Boom. I'm just going to give you guys all of this, and then it's going to be in the uh, the call description after I upload it. Perfect. And are we able to download the video uh, of this call, or is it just a view? Um, I can upload it to the, uh, if, if enough people want me to, I can upload it to, uh, I'll, I'll upload it to your course. And then on top okay. of that, I can also add it to, uh, what you call it. I can add it to, um, the telegram chat. Okay. I need that step-by-step -step playing polls. <laughs> there you go. Appreciate it. Yeah. Hope this helps you guys. I said, this probably oh, yeah, yeah. Call, this, this was cool. We've right. never done, but, uh, I think this is something that's going to be super valuable for everyone. Yeah, no, I, I like this. It's just really, uh, you know, step by step and really gets into each part. Because honestly, when I was when I'm creating ads, I'm just I'm not even doing like half of this. So this is this is a big help. Yeah. And we do this every week for all of our clients and some clients. We've been doing this now for over two years every week. Perfect. Yeah. So, Thank you. And just for Zach, we're going to uh, ask ChatGPT for the third visual hook. Um, another visual hook could be like uh, do, she doing some boxing or some MMA or some stuff like that, right? So that's great. But also, too, that's going to change the type of persona we're going after. Right now, we're just kind of going for the gym. Um, but we could easily go for a type of that type of girl um, by probably saying that type of girl in here as well. You know, you could also show her uh, sipping out of a Stanley cup. <laughs> hey, that's like wearing the Gucci bell with the, uh, with our denim. <laughs> there you go. That's actually a good one. Yeah. Um, all right. So here's what Claude said. Show a woman walking to gym, wearing an uncomfortable sports bra, adjusting the straps, tugging at the band, looking frustrated. I don't care for this one at all because our hook is saying POV, you found the most comfortable sports bra for the gym. And we're showing her visually or struggling with one. Um, opening package. Yeah, so this kind of actually showed the whole script here. One of the unique features. Uh, let's see. My screen's just on the way. Oh, this one is saying, put on the new one and demonstrate how much comfortable this by waving your arms freely, jogging in place constantly, giving two thumbs up. <laughs> I actually kind of like that. It's really weird, 
probably wouldn't have, I wouldn't use it, but guess what? Because I wouldn't use it, it'd probably work. <laughs> um, all right, cool. So now we got our three visual hooks. So if I would go and do this particular script right here, I would get the creator to film each one of these visual hooks. So that way we have, you know, when we do our DCT, three creatives, we have the same script over and over and over, but each a different visual hook um, for those. So next one we have is the following. I recently discovered the rack sports bra. Close up of the material of the bra. So let me do visual, boom. There we go. Uh, which has completely upgraded my workout experience. All right. What's the next thing that comes to your mind when basically, which has completely upgraded my workout experience? We could probably showcase um, maybe her like, again, just working out. Another close-up shot of her working out. Also, because we said it was in first person, so she talking to the camera in between the images, you know? Correct. Yeah. That's also a good point you have right there. Let's see. Let's actually add that. Her talking to the camera in the gym. Let's also take it a step further. Let's make sure where we talk, where is she talking to the camera? In the gym. Um, also, where at in the gym? You know? So let's just say she's standing in the squat rack. I know we all hate people who just stand there in a squat, squat rack and do nothing. Um, <laughs> all right. As soon as I put this on, I knew it's the most comfortable sports bra I've ever tried. This can be, honestly, this can be a visual, her at home um, facing away from the camera, putting on the sports bra. There we go. Get some Starbucks or Target. Target after the workout. So, All right, cool. Let me just do something real quick. All right, cool. Go through this really quick. Um, all right. Also, another thing you can do to make this easier is actually highlight the script. So that way people kind of have that uh Ooh, that's not what I want. Have that separation when they're looking at it. I've also I've also gone ahead and like italic as well. Make this a little easier. Like formatting the script. Boom, boom, boom. All right. POV found the most comfortable sports bra for the gym. Three different hooks. Girls going burpees, girls going lap pull downs, pulse up for back, waving your arms around freely jogging and please comfortable with two thumbs up. Okay, cool. Uh, da -da -da. As soon as I put it on, I just the most comfortable sports bra I've ever tried. Visual, her at home, facing away from the camera, putting on the sports bra. Uh, open back design, boom. Visual, showcase a couple of different shots for her working out. Da -da -da. Visual, there we go. All right. Now, last thing I would do for this is pretty much just go through and um, oop, uh, is really look at those hooks. Again, the hook's going to do like 80% of the work. So I would look at one more time, like the type of visual hook we showcase. Uh, give you a great example. Even like my Instagram reels, I'll notice like four to five times more views and likes and comments on an Instagram reel. If I showcase a Shopify screenshot of account we scaled versus just my face, um, 
you know, I don't think I'm ugly or anything like that, but just again, it's what people desire that they care about, you know, making more money. And quite frankly, my face has nothing to fucking deal with it. So um, I kind of look at these visual hooks and just really make sure that it articulates what we're going after. Um, so that's why like everything starts off with the hook. And then from here, we have our final script. Um, you know, if I were to send this off to a content creator, only thing else I would add in here is like references. And then I could link them to that four play dashboard that uh, we put up in here as well. Um, and then I would just send this script off and, you know, um, we, we have a final piece of content. Uh, one other key thing here, if we're working with content creators for this is uh, I would really make sure to even include like a couple examples of the content creator we want. So like, that's why I made sure to even say, like, when we start writing a script, like we want a girl, 25 year old female who lifts weights in the gym. I didn't say 25 to 50 year old girl who works out because working out, there's a lot of different exercises you can do. So like, I want it to be specific of the type of girl and what she's doing. Um, I can also get into as well, like ethnicities as well, even types of looks as well. You know, do I want a girl who looks like she's been lifting weights for years or do I want to look like, or do, or do I want to appeal to a girl that looks like she's been lifting weights for maybe six months? Like that's going to be a very different, uh, uh, thing as well that you can get a little bit deeper. I would say for this one, um, you know, girl who has been lifting weights for, a noticeable amount of time, but she's not bulky. So like, you know, she has a lean physique and stuff like that. She's clearly in shape. Um, so. Lean, she's in shape, but not muscular. I know the muscular is a polarizing for some girls. Some girls want to look like muscular and some girls, it's just like, you tell them this exercise make them look muscular and they will not step foot near that machine. Um, again, all personal preferences there. So, um, but yeah, so that's it. I mean, uh, you know, for here, I would send this off to uh, Incense. I would start hiring a creator or B, uh, I would go ahead and I would um, essentially uh, send this off to my visual creator. My visual creator, he would take this script and a couple of things he would do. Uh, he would take this and he would start looking at visuals we already have on file. You know, if we've worked with a lot of content creators, we'll just start pulling a bunch of clips to make this script. And then we'll use something like 11 labs. Um, I think it's 11 labs uh, for the audio to create a uh, just a yes. artificial audio. Um, we'll, we'll tend to do that a lot, to be honest. We'll do that a lot to kind of test an idea before we actually go spend, you know, a couple hundred dollars on like hiring content creators. So um, so that's probably the route we would go unless we didn't have that content or we're testing a, such a new concept that we just simply don't have the content. So we need to go and like hire that out right there. Um, but yeah, guys, <laughs> that's, that's how we create a script. <laughs> Any questions? Cause this is probably the longest freaking call we've ever done in lesson. <laughs> uh, just a quick one about the visual articulation one. Is that not the job for like the visual creator or is that the copywriter's job? So I always try to get the copywriter to do it because if the copywriter already has the ideas in her head, why not just articulate that now versus hoping your visual creator gets the idea, you know, now yeah. if the copywriter submits some full out, like some dumb shit, it's just like, yeah. what the hell? it is a terrible visual. So my visual creator notices that. A uh, visual creator will point that out. Right. So it's kind of have like the co copywriter give like the overall gist of it. And then the visual and creator will just kind of make sure it makes actual sense visually. Correct. Correct. Right. No um, yeah. And what I'll do is, is I'm going to drop this script in the chat for you guys. Let me pull it up real quick. Do do. Okay. See. Of course, it doesn't. <clears throat> Let's see. Let me also include boom. Yeah, I'll drop this. I'll drop this in the chat for you guys. That way, y'all can have it on file. Um, I just want to make sure I include everything. Uh, building undeniable proof. Boom. 
uh, let's see, winning ads, and then headline templates. Anyone have any other questions? Uh, yeah. Question about... Okay, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I, I, I go myself. How many time do you spend only writing the ads from the hook to the rest of the process? I mean, look, we just spent two hours doing research, figuring out this product and writing a script. Um, I might spend, you know, three or four hours just writing hooks. Okay. Um, I would say on average though, like a product we've been working with for a while, probably an hour to two hours for a brand new product like this. Like, like if this, you know, Jose came and said, Hey Nick, here's your, here's your money. I want you to start running my ads for me. I would spend probably about eight hours researching and coming up with a lot of ideas for this particular market. Um, I'd probably spend about three or four hours writing hooks. And then I'd probably spend another couple hours writing a variety of different scripts. So like, I'd probably go write a couple more scripts after this, just to make sure that I really have the best idea. Cause like, this is just one idea right here. And we already know, like, our, our average success rates about 20% of the DCT. So I'll just did all this work and I need to do it like nine more times. So I can have 10 and out of those 10, we'll see about one or two of those be successful. So, you know, multiply these two hours I just spent times 10, I'm spending about 20 hours before I find my first winning ad. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. And my question is, um, do I uh, like get this good? Uh, like we are creating a ad concept and we are testing inside of DCT three different hooks inside of like the same ad video ad, but the hook is different. Yeah. Yeah. So I always keep the same hook in the beginning. So like right here, I kept the same hook POV. You found the most comfortable sports bra for the gym. So only thing I'm changing here is a visual hook. So we're going to do this visual hook, this visual hook, and this visual hook. So that okay. way, when I launch that DCT, it's going to have this exact same script three times. It's just one video is going to have this visual hook, and one video is going to have this visual hook, and one's going to have this hook. Does that make sense? Nice. Yeah, yeah, nice. All right, cool. Here, I am dropping this in the chat now. Um, I'm also going to add this um, to uh, when I upload the recording and stuff like that. I'll also uh, upload it there. All right, let's see. Anyone ask any more questions? Mm, well, I'm gonna make the the ad. I'm gonna make it. Yeah, let us know some forms. <laughs> if you wanna see it when you make that ad, drop it in the chat. Yeah, yeah do it. We we'll love we'll, to see it. Well, in in Spanish, we we don't have the POV thing, so I'll figure it out. But but I'll make the the rest of the video. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, I definitely think. A big thing with the limited amount of research that I had today is that that supportive sports bra you have. I'd be definitely diving into that right there based off the things I've seen in the marketplace today. Yeah, cool. So cool. Thank you very much, Nick. And to everyone. <laughs> You're welcome, Jose. Thank you for letting us use your product today. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, guys. Any other any other last questions? Yeah, we how long how long would you spend on like research and like time in general for articulating the visual hooks? That's a great question right there. Um, when you do a lot of research, like I just did a little bit of research today on the marketplace, but I already got to kind of start to see what kind of visuals that people are responding to, right? Um, so I kind of in the beginning just kind of showcase the different visuals that I see from my research. Um, but let's say I find a new concept and I really want to try to dig deeper on a more like visually captivating um, hook, then... Um, I'll spend a little bit more time, you know, it's, it's hard to say, like today was pretty easy one, but if I had no clue what visuals I would need, then I might spend a couple hours, just kind of the pin, yeah. right? Um, and also too, the text always drives the visuals. That's the key thing there. When you, when you do it like that, it allows everything to flow a lot easier. I see too many people try to do the visuals, then they try to do the hook. And that's what fucks up for people. When you say the visuals or the, the, the text drives the hook. Are you saying that's what people stay for? Like, can you, what do you mean by that exactly? Yeah. So like you just watched me open it back up. Um, you literally just watched me read the script. And as I'm reading the script, I'm writing down the visuals.
that pop up in my head and like different ways to articulate that text right there. Mm -hmm. So that's all I did. So a lot of people, they'll make the mistake and they'll try to be like, all right, what type of visuals do I need to create for an ad? And they try to come up with all these visuals. Then they go write the script. I write yeah, the script yeah. first, then I create the visuals. It's so much easier that way. And gotcha. if you need more visually captivating visuals, then it's always going to stem back to the type of script you're writing. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Any other last questions? This, this ad would be more middle of the funnel? No. No? No. This is a cold ad. Middle, middle would be more of like people that know the brand. Yeah. Middle, middle funnel would be like, here's why I love Rack or your brand mm -hmm. names. Okay. And you're selling people and the trust and the establishing with your brand. That's all you're doing. Okay. Cool. All right. Anyone have any last questions before we wrap up? Thank you, brother. Have a great weekend. Peace. <laughs> Appreciate that, Phil. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, thank you all for everyone who stayed. It was a long call. Um, if you have any questions, drop them to Telegram. Try to get to them as so I can during the weekend. Y'all have a good weekend. Enjoy yourselves. Take care. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.